This meeting is called to order. This is a regular meeting of the Bellflower City Council. It's Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 at 531 in the evening. Roll call, please. Councilmember Sanchez. Here. Councilmember Santanez. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dutton. Here. Councilmember Morse. Here. Mayor Coops. Here. Um, Mr. Smoot. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the council will recess to closed session for the item 3A listed on the agenda, conference with real property negotiator. Does anyone have any conflicts on any of evening's closed session items? No. None. Is there anyone in the audience <laughs> that would like to speak on a closed session item? See none. We will now recess to closed session. We're going to call this meeting to order. This is the regular meeting of the Belfire City Council. It's Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the evening. And uh, we are just returned from the closed session and there are no reportable actions from closed session. So now we'll have the roll call, please. Myra. Council Member Sanchez. Here. Council Member Santanez. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Dutton. Here. Council Member Morse. Here. Mayor Coops. Here. Tonight we'll have the invocation provided by Council Member Sonny Santianez, and that'll be immediately followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, and that'll be offered by Brian McNerney, our Interim Director of Public Safety. So please stand with me. Let's bow our head in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, uh, the gift of this wonderful community called Seat of Bellflower. Uh, we thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for giving us our wonderful residents, our wonderful staff. Uh, we, we thank you for giving us this wonderful community. Uh, as we gather this evening, uh, we, thank, we thank our members of our military, our first responders. And as we celebrated Memorial Day yesterday, we remember those who, uh, who gave up their life, the ultimate sacrifice. As we gather this evening to discuss the matters before us, please guide us, enlighten us, and give us the wisdom to decide what is best for our community. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Please place your right hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. So now we're going to have our council announcements, and I'll do the first one. The video recording of the 2024 Bravo Awards ceremony is now available for public viewing on the city's YouTube channel. Additionally, the video will be posted on the city's website and will air on Spectrum Cable Channel 36 before the airing of city council meetings, and that'll start June 22nd. The approximate airing times and uh, days and times are on Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m., Thursdays at 9.30 in the morning, and Saturdays at 9.30 in the morning. So thank you again for all the sponsors that helped put on the Bravo event this year. Mayor Pro Tem Ray Dutton. Thank you, Mayor. Parks and Recreation Department will kick off their summer with a new event showcasing everything the department has to offer. Join the department on Friday, June 14th of this year from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Crothers Park located at 10500 Flora Vista Street. Enjoy a preview of classes, activities, and special events for the whole family, along with games and booths and uh, Brim, which is Bellflower Recreation and Motion Trailer. Um, after the sun sets and stay around for the first outdoor movie of the summer. That would be called Trolls Band Together on the baseball field. Bring your own picnic uh, or lawn chairs and blankets. For more information um, on these summer events, please visit the city's website at www.bellflower.org. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Dutton. Council Member Victor Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Bellflower. Have you been impacted by recent business closures or need assistance with reemployment? The Southeast Los Angeles County Workforce Development Board provides resources and job placement assistance at no cost. Mm -hmm. For more information, email Vanessa Ramirez at vanessa.ramirez at celico.com. 
Celico is S-E-L-A-C-O.com or visit the website at www.celicowdb.com. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Victor Sanchez. Council Member Sonny Santanez. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Is your child struggling with reading or math? The Brackensick Library has, has you covered for their, with their free Summer Stars tutoring program for students in grades first through sixth. The first session focuses on reading from June 18 to July 11, 2024. The second session focuses on math from July 16 to August 8, 2024. Sessions are filled on a first-come, first-served basis, depending on library and program capacity. Sign up now before spots fill up. For complete details and to submit an interest form, visit lacountylibrary.org forward slash summer dash stars. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Sandy Inez. Council Member Wendy Morris. Thank you, Mayor. To help support local business owners, the City of Bellflower is highlighting local businesses in its monthly e-citizen newsletter. Share business updates, special events, holiday celebrations, and more by emailing your information to economic underscore dev at bellflower.org. For more information on business resources, please call 562-804-1424, extension 2010. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Morris. So we're having a few presentations this evening, and the first one is Certificates of Achievement for the Student Art Festival winners. And I see many of them here in attendance, so we're going to call them forward in a moment. But let me first read what you've achieved. For the first presentation, we'll be honoring the four first place winners of the City of Bellflower's 2024 Student Art Festival. That took place on May 4, 2024. The Art Festival included third through sixth grade students, with each grade level being assigned a theme. The third grade theme was Underwater Adventure. The fourth grade theme was The Great Outdoors. The fifth grade theme was Imaginary World. The sixth grade theme was the City of Bellflower Community. Participating students were able to create paintings, drawings, or collages within these themes. The winning artwork has been on display at Bellflower City Hall in the lobby and the display cases since May 4. I'd like to invite my council colleagues to the presentation riser to present the certificates of recognition to four first place winners. Students, when I call your name, come forward and we'll uh, take a picture and present you your certificate. So colleagues, let's gather over here and we'll start the process. We're going to do the third, the third grade winner first. That's Seiji Kajano. Is she here, please? Congratulations. Going to shake his hand. And yeah. Congratulations, third grader. All right, so turn around. I'm going to take some pictures with your photo, and we've got a presentation here that I'll read in a moment. I think it says, third grade ILC, ILC elementary theme, water adventure. Congratulations on winning first place in the City of Bellfire Student Arts Festival. We applaud your achievement and success in the artistic endeavors leading to new by the Mayor Dan Fuchs and Councilman Dutton, and here is Council Member Wendy Morris and Mayor Dan Fuchs. Congratulations on a great job. <laughs> All right, you're dismissed. Thank Fourth you. Grade now. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Fourth grade win winner. Amen, Amelie Valencourt. Thank 
Congratulations. Congratulations. So this is her rendition, her picture. Twenty four. Yeah, Moving on to fifth grade, Janessa Pacheco. Congratulations. Congratulations. Achievement, fifth grade stuff. Elementary theme, imaginary world. Place in the Cedar Bellfire Student Art Festival. I'm Ray Dutton, Wendy Morris, Victor Sanchez, and Sonny Sandianez. Thank you. Now we're moving on to the sixth grade winner, Daphne Petlabra. Congratulations. Certificate of Achievement. Elementary Congratulations on winning the first place in the City of Bellflower Student Art Festival. We applaud your achievements and wish you continued success in your artistic endeavors. Signed again, Mayor Dan Coops, Mayor Pro Tem Ray Dunton, Council Member Wendy Morris, Council Member Victor Sanchez, and Council Member Sonny Sandinez. So that's for you, and good luck. This is our second presentation of the evening, and this is proclamation declaring the month of May as Mental Health Awareness Month. For the second pre presentation, I'd like to invite Executive Director of Community Family Guidance Center, Bill Cinco, to the presentation riser as we declare May 2024 20, as Mental Health Advisory Month. Bill. Thanks for coming. I'll give you this piece of paper here so we don't lose continuity. This is your first rodeo. You've been here before you received these. <laughs> but anyway, here we got the proclamation. An appreciation. The City of Belfar proclaims Mental Health Awareness Month. Mental health is important for our individual well-being and vitality as well as, of, as well as all of our families, communities, and businesses. One in ten children has a serious emotional disturbance if untreated, can lead to school failure, physical illness, substance abuse, jail, and even suicide. May 9th has been designated the National Children's Mental Health Awareness Day, and mental health is biologically based on brain disorder that cannot be overcome through willpower and is not related to a defect in person's character or intelligence. 
Mental health recovery not only benefits individuals with mental health disorders by focusing on their abilities to live, work, learn, and fully participate and contribute to our society. It also enriches the culture of our community. Therefore, I, Dan Coops, the mayor of the city of Bellflower, do hereby proclaim May 2024 as National Mental Health Awareness Month, signed again by Mayor Dan Coops, Mayor Pro Tem Ray Dunton, Councilmember Wendy Morris, Councilmember Victor Sanchez, Councilmember Sonny Santinez. And this is for you in a few words, please. Thank you. Uh, it's, it is, uh, every month is, uh, is Mental Health Month in my book. and. Uh, it's something that uh, particularly our, our kids are dealing with these days, especially since COVID. And Bellflower is one of our bigger city draws. 25% of our caseload is from Bellflower. Last year, we brought in 271 new kids plus 200 kids out of the school, uh, Bellflower Unified School District on top of that. So uh, we're seeing a lot of kids in Bellflower and doing a pretty good work here. So thank you very much for this. Thank you for your receiving. Right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, presentation number three. Proclamation declaring the month of May as Asian American and Pacific Islander Month. For the third presentation, I'd like to invite the representatives from the Belfar High School Filipino Club to the presentation riser as we declare May 2024 as Asian American Pacific Islander Month. So are they present? Come on up. Wait, in the school year, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Is this the whole club, or are there more of you? Oh, there's more. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a good representation here. This is one of the just face the camera. Face the camera. We're going to take a picture. Right in front of us. Right in front of us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, you know, you're here because you're from Belfar High, and Victor is a graduate of Belfar High. <laughs> and so is Ray Dutton. Smoking and, on, and the mayor. And the mayor. He was smoking under the bleachers most of the time, but that's all cool. <laughs> <laughs> but things worked out. <laughs> I don't, don't tell nobody. Yeah, yeah, like nobody knows, right? <laughs> I'm sure nobody does that anymore. <laughs> no, no. They close the bleachers and you can't get out. Well, that, that's why they did it, because of you. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, proclamation. City of Belfar proclaims Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. The month of May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and Asian American Pacific Islanders have flourished and succeeded in our society, becoming a vital part of our nation's history. The Asian American and Pan American, Pan Pacific Pan Islander communities have made important contributions to the culture, civic, and economic life of Bellflower, and Asian American Islanders have made valuable and lasting contributions to our country, our state, our city, achieving success in all aspects of society, including business, medicine, education, politics, science, and arts. Bellflower residents are encouraged to celebrate our diverse heritage and culture and continue our efforts to create a world that is more just, peaceful and prosperous for all. Therefore, I, Dan Coops, the mayor of the city of Bellflower, do hereby proclaim May 2024 as Asian American Pacific Islander Month, signed by Mayor Dan Coops, Mayor Pro Tem Ray Dunton, Council Member Wendy Morris, Council Member Victor Sanchez, and Council Member Sonny San Inez, who is, of course, our favorite Filipino on the council. <laughs> <laughs> You got, a, you got a speaker? Uh, yes, uh, we'd like to say uh, thank you all. Um, thank you so much to Sunny for reaching out to us and um, for having our club be up here uh, to this day. Uh, we love sharing the culture uh, for the Philippines and for everyone else. Thank you guys so much. Yes. Great.
Okay, one more presentation. This is going to be a presentation by the L.A. County Sanitation District for the Ramona Avenue Sewer Relining Project. Uh, the, the presentation representatives from Los Angeles County Sanitation District will be giving a presentation on the entire line of uh, when and where and how. And we're excited to make the, have you make the presentation tonight. Uh, I, being the mayor, serve on the sanitation board, and we meet together every other week. And this is part of the staff that takes care of all the needs of the county and way of wastewater and uh, sewage and uh, collection of trash. It all falls on their purview. So we're glad to have you. And whoever's going to speak, uh, you have the oh, yeah. the oh, right here. You're ready to go. Yeah, Honorable Mayor and Council Members, uh, tonight uh, from the San District, we have Renee uh, Canedo. Renee will be providing the uh, presentation uh, tonight. And then we also have other representatives from the same district, as well as the contractor that will be working on the project if you have any questions for the contractor. So with that, I'll turn it over to Renee and let him uh, start with the presentation. Good evening, sir. Hey, good evening. Thanks a lot, Len. All right. So my name is Renee Canedo. I work at LA County Sanitation District. I'm the resident engineer for the Artesia Extension Trunk Sewer Rehab Phase 2 project. The intent of the presentation today is to go over the details of the project and the impact on the city of Bellflower. So first, a little bit about ourselves. So LA County Sanitation District, our mission to protect public health and the environment through innovative and cost-effective wastewater and solid waste management, and in doing so, convert waste into resources such as recycled water, energy, and recycled materials. Here's a map of the different facilities that we have. We serve as far south as Long Beach up to La Cañada, then we have a couple of facilities in Valencia and Saugus, and then as far north as Lancaster and Palmdale in the desert area. We serve around 78 cities and parts of the unincorporated LA County. So we're doing a lot of work in order to rehab our existing sewer infrastructure. We're doing 30 plus rehab projects every year, and we're spending about 100 million per year, and we plan to continue to do that for the next 20 years. So we're hard at work at rehabbing our existing sewer infrastructure. So our project team is comprised of LA County Sanitation District with myself, Phil Kang, my supervising engineer, Roseanne Parascuelas as the supervising design engineer, and Leon Findley, the project engineer. We also have a representative from Sancon Technologies, Ryan Helmuth, is uh, the vice president and the contractor on this project. So a little bit about the project. So we decided to go with a cured in place pipe liner uh, method, or CIPP. This is a lot more cost and time effective than the way it used to be done, which is rehab with over-replacement via open trench, where we'd have to open the trench up, pull the pipe out, replace it, and put everything back on. With this CIPP liner, it saves a lot of time and money um, for the cities. We're planning to rehab six, around 6,000 linear feet of sewer pipe. We're also going to be rehabbing 44 sewer manholes and modifying about 10 manholes. This project involves the city of Bellflower, Norwalk, and Cerritos. For the city of Bellflower, most of the work is going to be on Ramona Street between Clark and Bellflower, and then we also have some scope of work at Artesia and Woodruff. The construction cost for this will be a little bit under three million dollars. So as you can see here, this is the piping in the city of Bellflower. The, the line that we're rehabbing underneath Ramona is a highly critical system. The light blue lines show all the pipes that feed into that line. And so this sewer line serves tens of thousands of city residents and businesses within the city of Bellflower. So yeah, this is, this is a very critical line. By CIPP lining, we'll extend the lifespan of the existing pipe for another 15 year, 50 years, sorry. By rehabbing the lines, we'll, we'll help minimize service interruptions and we'll keep the construction costs down. 
And if we don't rehab the lines over time, the sewer line will deteriorate. And I will have unscheduled service interruptions, we'll have tra heavy traffic impacts, and at worst case, a sewer spill and a sinkhole. So we'd like to rehab the line and then not have to worry about it for another 50 years. Here's a video of the cured in, pa cured in place pipe CIPP lining system. In addition to setting standards for the assessment, maintenance, and rehabilitation of underground infrastructure, NASCO's mission is to assure the continued acceptance and growth of all trenchless technologies. Thanks to the hard work of NASCO's Pipe Rehabilitation Committee, we are pleased to present this brief overview of Cured in Place Pipe, or as it is commonly referred to in the trenchless industry, CIPP. We also want to thank our sponsors for funding the production of this video and for bringing awareness to the many important features and benefits of cured in place pipe as a proven trenchless technology. CIPP is a method used to replace a deteriorated underground pipe without digging it up. In the simplest terms, it is a pipe within a pipe. Here's how it works. A tube made of polyester felt or fiberglass designed to the appropriate thickness and length for the application is saturated with resin. This is also referred to as the wet out process. The resin saturated tube is then installed into the existing deteriorated pipe by inverting the tube into position using water or air pressure or by pulling the tube into place and inflating it. Once in place, the tube is cured or hardened under pressure by using either heat in the form of hot water or steam or by using ultraviolet light. There are a number of appropriate reasons to use CIPP, including reducing infiltration or exfiltration, fixing and preventing future damage caused by roots with a jointless CIPP, addressing structural issues, or for full replacement of an old pipe that is beyond its useful life. CIPP is also appropriate when excavation and replacement of a pipe is cost prohibitive or would cause too much destruction to the surrounding area. In addition to replacing an entire length of pipe, CIPP can be used when a pipe requires preventative maintenance or repair to just a small section of the pipe, minimizing cost and disruption when one section is compromised, but the rest of the pipe is maintaining optimum flow and efficiency. CIPP is proven for lateral, mainline, and manhole repairs, Available in diameters of up to 120 inches, the most common sizes range between 8 and 48 inches. CIPP can be installed in a variety of common shapes for sewers including round, egg-shaped, arch, and elliptical. Square or rectangular pipes can be lined, but may provide challenges when fitting the CIPP tightly against the host pipe. Multiple bends up to 90 degrees and transitions in size and shape have been accomplished successfully and can be accommodated by custom manufacturing the CIPP to specific requirements. CIPP does not impact flow capacity and offers many other benefits, including a seamless and jointless pipe, quick installation, significant cost savings versus traditional replacement, and, perhaps most importantly, the protection of our environment. Because an old pipe does not need to be dug up and disposed of, and the earth surrounding it is not significantly disturbed, sidewalks, roads, parking lots, and yards are not damaged. Protecting our carbon footprint, this green technology means the damaged pipe is repurposed or recycled by serving as the host pipe for the new cured-in-place pipe. The damaged pipe does not need to be hauled off to a landfill and traffic businesses, and neighborhoods are not significantly impacted. Cured-in-place pipe is a proven technology that has been used successfully since the 1970s. With hundreds of millions of feet of CIPP in service throughout the world today, it is considered the most widely accepted pipeline rehabilitation technology available and is a viable method for the repair of sewer, potable water, and pressure pipe applications. For information on CIPP safety, to download specification guidelines, and to become part of NASCO's Pipe Rehab Committee, please visit 
nasco.org. Thanks again to our sponsors for making this video possible. All right. So the next few slides will go over what you should expect on Ramona Street. So here's a typical setup for a CIPP lining. We have the rig over the existing manhole where they'll prep the liner and then place it within the sewer pipe. In order to apply the sewer liner, we need to bypass the existing flow. So in the back, you see those two large rectangles that holds the pumps that, pull, that pushes the water through the sewer piping and then into the, another manhole to allow us to do the sewer lining. Over here, we'll see the sewer piping bypass lines. So when the pumps push the sewer water to another location, that way we can conduct all the work inside the, the existing sewer line. And then here, if we need to cross the street or for any other reasons, we'll go below, below the street. We run the, the piping in a shallow trench and then place plating over it in order to protect it from vehicular traffic. And this last slide shows the rehab manhole process. So we have someone going in the line, uh, going the manhole, prep the surface, apply the coating, and then we have uh, more personnel on top to provide ventilation and for safety reasons. So we've been working with the city of Bellflower and Bellflower Mutual Water Company in order to reduce service interruptions to trash, water, and traffic. For the water service shutdown, we will only be doing one single 12-hour shutdown per property, and no critical facilities will be allowed to be shut off. The project will be done in four phases, and then in that area, no on-street parking will be allowed during that phase of the project along Ramona Street. We've also been working with the City of Bellflower and Trash Hauler Service provider on a modified trash pickup schedule during each phase. We are gonna to have to do some closures on Ramona Street and Bellflower and Ramona Street and Clark, but we've been working with the city of Bellflower to coordinate when's the best time to do that, and we are going to do the work during the weekend from Friday 5 p.m. to Sunday 6, oh, sorry, Sunday, Monday 6 a.m. in order to not impact commuter traffic. Here's a breakdown of a, of a typical service interruption. We're gonna go ahead and start at 7 a.m. bypass and testing, 8 a.m. clean the existing line, 9 a.m., the, the water service interruption will start, and we'll start installing the CIPP liner. That work will continue to about 9 p.m. Will we reinstate the water service? Then we'll CCTV the line again, make sure everything is good, and then that'll be the end of the day for the service interruption. Prior to the start of the interruption, we'll be providing bottled water to the residents, and then we'll also be providing portable toilets and hand-washing stations, and we'll be working with the residents to try to locate those on private residence as much as possible. This work will only, the portable water stations, toilets, all those things will only be in effect during the 12 hour shutdown. Here's a rough breakdown of the work and duration. So for the first week, we'll start letting business and residents know that there'll be no parking and the work is coming up. Then phase one starts, bypass installation, CIPP lining, We'll do the bypass system, the temp service interruption, install the line, clean up, and then start notifications for phase two. Move on to phase two, repeat until we're done with phase four, then we'll hit the site restoration, finish up anything else, and then we'll be wrapped up with the project. This map shows the rough areas where the different phases, where the parking and traffic control will be affecting. So we're gonna start on the east side on Ramona and Bellflower. Phase one duration will be approximately four weeks. Then we'll move west. Uh, phase two will be about three weeks. Phase, uh, sorry, phase two will be three weeks. Phase three will be two weeks. And then the final phase uh, will be five weeks. We wanna make sure that the residents are notified. So we'll be conducting a community meeting two weeks prior to the start of construction. That way, if anyone has any questions, concerns, we can hear them out. Also, residents will be notified via door hanger uh, 14 days, seven days, and 24 hours in advance prior to start of work. And then those notifications will have my contact information and the contractor's contact information. So if there's any other questions or issues during constructions, they can re uh, reach out to me directly. And that is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, do you, does anyone have any questions? My initial one would be, are there your notifications that are handed out Bilingual? Will you? Yes. Good. And uh, this 
expenditure is not a bill to the city of Belfire. That's something that will be provided by the sanitation district, correct? Correct. So we, we own the, the sewer infrastructure in that area. So it's a, it's a LA County Sanitation District property or project. Mm -hmm. Is there, is this a proven, something you've done recently in the local area or is this an experimental or how would you assess this? Just a moment, we'll let uh, kids uh, so I'd like homework. to bring uh, Ryan with SanCon. He's been doing this for quite a while. All right, so you can kind of explain to me your uh, history with this procedure. Yeah, CIPP has been around for probably almost 40 years now. Um, it's a very proven technology. It's done worldwide. Uh, it's the number one pipe rehabilitation method out there. It's the least impactful to the community instead of digging up the street for months on end. Uh, it's got a 50-year design life, and we design each and every liner that we install based on the given ground loading, dead load, live load. So it's a fully structural, specific for the application product. Um, it's, it's very well proven in the industry. So in front of each property is a lateral that would feed that main trunk line, correct? That is correct. Is that replaced as well or at, at the curb on, that's the homeowner's responsibility? Or explain to me the hookup on that stuff. I don't know how your city controls um, lateral connections and tie-ins, but this product does the main line only. Okay. So the existing line will stay in place, merely put a new liner inside of it, and you've already measured it to find out what's required in order to make the right measurements to yes for the we, proper materials. Yes, we have already done field verification for mm -hmm. diameter, length, and depth, so we, we know exactly what needs to go on the ground. Is there any anticipation... If it, you were to have rain or excessively hot weather, is there any impediments that could cause this thing to be delayed once you start? Hot weather I don't think would be impactful, and ideally um, when this project is slated to go, I, you know, hopefully we don't have any kind of fluke rain events. So, And what do you uh, think, uh, when would you like to do this project? As soon as possible. Define that tomorrow, next week, next month. Uh, we we have a couple other contractors to line up, but I'd like to get started in about a month. Okay, and where will you be holding your uh, residential meetings to inform the tenants and homeowners what's going on? Um, so we would make arrangements um, to hold it most likely at Sims Park. That's that's one of our our typical spots where we try to hold the uh, community meetings. So we would block out some time. Uh, we would advertise it through our social media. They would go through their process of advertising all the residents and letting them know about the upcoming meeting to hear about the county's uh, uh, project and and just have an informal uh, meeting to vet out any questions, concerns, or issues that the residents uh, may have leading up to it. So most likely we would do it at Sims Park. You mentioned that you're going to have some uh, temporary... Uh, washing facilities and uh, uh, places, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for without being crass? Porta potty. Porta -potty. Outhouse. Yeah, <laughs> outhouse, porta potty. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of those will be provided based on how long the project is? And not in, in length of, not time, but a, a, the linear feet of the project. Linear feet, it would be, our shots are around 600 feet in length generally, maybe six, 800 feet. So we'd like to put probably a half dozen portable restrooms, a couple on each side of the street. Um, the residents aren't restricted from using their restrooms. We ask that they minimize it, but they're able to still use the restroom during this process. So use, having the portable restroom isn't critical. It's more of a convenience if they are done using their own for the day and they need somewhere else to use one. Um, that's why those are there. So, it, but if they introduce water into their sewer and it goes to the lateral and then into your main line, does that impact your procedures? A small amount of water is okay. Okay. Um, however, dishes, laundry, baths, I anything that would use a substantial amount of water is a problem for us. And that would be for 12 hours, you said? That is correct. That would be the maximum amount of time someone would be offline with their sewer connection? That is correct. But they still could, and the one, so that you're... The uh, bathroom facilities will be in conjunction with a place to wash your hands and everything. That all is one composite. Yeah, they'll they'll have little hand washing stations next to the portable restrooms. Yeah. And will you be putting that up before the project begins to kind of give them a heads up? This is what's going on here. Or? Yeah. In addition to the public notifications, we'll put them out on the street early. But we don't want 
them to be just sitting on the sidewalk or, or you know, no, out it. in public view for a long time. So they'll arrive relatively close to the date of the liner and picked up very shortly after. So do you then just move them down as you're continuing to, to progress? They will be on site and then pulled completely off site because in between each liner install, that duration is to do four days of CIPP work, right? So we're talking 14 weeks to do four days of liner. So there's a lot of pre-work that has to be done and a lot of post-work that has to be done, mainly above ground with moving the bypass down the street. Because the bypass, you have to get the flows out of the sewer to dry it out so we can do our work. And so all of that fusing of the HDPE, setting up of the pumps, the traffic control, that all takes quite a bit of time. My job takes, if everything goes well, one day per shot, and then we move down the street. And you'll be providing a phone number to the residents to, if there's something that goes awry, that they can reach out to your company or to the sanitation district for some relief or some explanation, or they go to a, a recording recorded message, or how is that handled? No, it's it's directly to my cell phone or mm-hmm. or to the district's line. Yeah. And where will you be? You must be in need of a storage area to have all your equipment to be kept at night. Have you found a place for that to happen, or do you take it all off the site? Each night. My company mobilizes in and out every day. Uh, right. We're out of Huntington Beach, so we're relatively close. Um, the contractor, once they set up the traffic control and start installing their bypass system, everything will be contained within that traffic control. So at the end of the day, you put bring in a low boy or whatever and haul out all your equipment that's done the installation? My stuff, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that won't be an impediment to the f- traffic flow or anything else? No, but there will be a substantial amount of piping and pumps and equipment on the street that are, that's responsible for moving that sewer flow okay. around our work area. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn it over to Victor because I know he has some questions because he's got a lot of friends on that street (laughs) and voters. And (laughs) Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, First off, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I don't sit on sanitation, so this is pretty informative. Um, The the start timeline you're saying you're projecting to start, you want to start in June, ideally somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my, some of my concerns that I have right off the bat, and I'd like to learn a little bit more, is your traffic um, conge- or like the lack of access that some of the residents will have to their um, property during the time of closure. So can you walk me through that? What does that look like? So once this piping is installed, it is a continuous, call it 1,000-foot stretch or 1,200-foot stretch of high-density polyethylene pipe. Two of them running down the road. Not, oh, okay, running down the yeah, road. Yeah, running down the okay. middle of the road. So, yes, no, there will be no lefts across traffic both directions in the area we are working in while we are there. So residents, essentially, when that's during your closure period, can you bring up your timeline, your, the, so at what point in time, basically, our residents not gonna are won't be able to access their property essentially or exit their property with a vehicle. Yeah, Renee, if you go to the one with the little colored phasing deal. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, when blue phase phase one is up, mm-hmm. that'll be four weeks. Um, it's not all going to be installed overnight, and then it's going to be closed for four weeks. It's going to be an incremental process to get in installed <laughs> down the street. So, not everyone's going to be out of, you know, turning left across the street for all four weeks, but it will affect someone over the course of four weeks from start to finish. And, and so what's the process like, obviously, you know, especially for people who are uh, seasoned adults or for students with special needs who need transportation access, things of that nature, what's the accommodation that, that's planned for these circumstances? And then, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. So they will still have access to their residences. It's that they won't be able to have on-street parking. Okay. So the, the traffic will be one way. Um, you just won't be able to cross and go the other direction. But so the residents will have access to their uh, to their homes. To their driveways. Yeah. They'll no, still be able to turn into their driveways is what you're saying? Absolutely. No yeah. left turns. No yeah. left turns. <clears throat> Councilmember Sanchez, so if you, it, I mean, this is a good example right here. So if you just focus on the, the blue line. Um, so anybody that lives on the south side of Ramona Street, the only way they're going to be able to access their property is to come from Ardmore. They're going to have to come either north or south on Ardmore and make that turn to head down in the easterly direction to access their driveways. Okay. You're not going to be able to come in from Bellflower Boulevard and make a left turn into their, into their driveway. That's, Understood. There's going to be that physical barrier there of those bypass valves. 
And those are going to be in place for several days, if not weeks. And they'll be in the middle of the road? They'll be in the middle of the road, which is why it causes the loss of on-street parking. Got it. The work area um, is going to be pro- approximately, they correct me, um, I think it's going to be about 15 feet in width. So the center 15 feet of, of the roadway will be occupied by construction equipment, uh, construction workers, pumps, piping, and all that. So we're left in, 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 uh, on Ramona Street, we're left with about 12 and a half feet outside of that construction line to the curb line. Okay. So there's not enough room for uh, vehicles to be parked on the streets at the same time allowing for vehicles to travel down the street. So on-street parking or no off, on-street parking will not be permitted during those construction phases. Okay, perfect. Um, and so for those folks with um, mobility issues or mobility um, needs, are there going to be special arrangements made for them for transportation? I mean, are they still, uh, as a bus going to still, like the, uh, still, the buses, will everything will still be able to pick up and work, work down, off? work down the roadways okay. and stuff. Yeah. The closures will be, um, <clears throat> well notified. Uh, okay. we can notify the, our, our local shuttle that we do here. We can notify <clears throat> the school district and let them know, um, if in fact, there, there needs to be any pickups. I mean, that's due diligence. We, those would be right. two good agencies to also notify. Us right, of. and I just bring that up because we've had this in the past, Correct. where we've had you know calls from with special needs and so, and so forth, who have you know, we need to make sure that we're providing them with ample time. I don't know if 14 days is going to be sufficient time for those cases because uh, obviously they may want to make special accommodations. Uh, lastly, and, and I think um, the mayor asked a lot of great questions, but the so for my understanding purposes, the, the, during the 12 hour period, uh, the shutdown, there's no water, basically no water access. So they all get shut, shut off. Just in that phase. In that phase there, section. There, there won't be water access for 12 hours. We'll have bottled water there. And like Ryan said, they'll have a few flushes <coughs> in, in the tank already that right. we can handle. But yes, for the 12 hour period, uh, they won't have access to water. And then uh, this will not affect critical facilities. Okay. All right, cool. Well, not cool, but I get it. We got to do it. It has to get done. Um, I know that there are, and I, I, I'm i sure that uh, my council colleague or Mayor Pro Tem Dutton will probably ask this question, but we also have some concerns regarding the senior centers um, uh, on the uh, west side of Bellflower Boulevard. And so wondering if it would be prudent to reverse um, your direction, maybe start on the west, head east, and give the senior center some more time to prepare. Just a thought, you know, when I'm putting it out there. Uh, we can give the senior center more heads up. When we're laying this out, uh, I believe the senior center is not going to be affected by the water shutdown. Okay. I'd have to confirm. But honestly, the last time we looked at it, um, that was a concern that was brought up. We looked at the latter connect, lateral connections, and they, they are not a part of that line. So okay. they, they, they'll be affected by traffic a bit because it's right before it starts, but they won't have their, but their water won't be shut off. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll take a look and confirm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Dutton, I'll let you continue since you have part of that in your district. Do hey, wanna, let, I do have yeah, some. I'm going to refer okay. to Wendy first. All right. Let's do Wendy because there's another scene. We all have a little bit of a knowledge of this. <laughs> so um, on the, the water being shut off, and so I work in senior living, and so when even two hours of water being shut off causes a huge disaster, and I work on Ramona Street. Um, on the hand with the bathrooms outside, is there anything that's going to be ADA accessible? I don't really like notice porta potties being necessarily ADA accessible. And will there, I know we're not the only people that have seniors that live on that street. Will there be places that those bathrooms will be accessible for them? So for the senior centers, they, they won't have their water shut down. So we'll, we'll create a bypass for that. Well, I'm them. thinking even on Ramona in general. I know just because we're senior living, but there'll be their senior tenants or just tenants in general that may need a facility that's easily accessible. So 
but maybe they're in a wheelchair, maybe they're in a walker, maybe they're just not able to do a step up, or will there be anything that will be accessible for them? Yeah, we, we can look at options to put like at least one ADA per side of the road per phase, something like that. To, um, ideally, they don't have to leave the comfort of their home or their, you know, where they're staying. Um, and like Renee said, if it's a, a senior facility, that's being considered critical and it's not going to be shut down. But if it happens to be a senior citizen living in a, a standard home or apartment or something like that, then, yeah, their, their water would be turned off. But we, we can talk about that and, and find a way to you and know, accommodate that. trash pickup, because, um, like, particularly at one of our build buildings is six days a week. So that dumpster goes out on that street six days a week. Um, what will happen then? Where so, will the dumpsters go when, when the scout service is Yeah, so this, is, this has been an interesting puzzle we've been working with CRNR on. So um, Frank Preciato and myself have been working with Crystal and Dan Stepanian to formulate a plan on how we're going to do that pickup. Because, correct, there, there is a lot of single-use or single one-time-a-week pickups. There are more than a handful that are multi, sometimes three, four, or five days. Um, so CRNR um, will reach out to those customers to see if there's a possibility of consolidating some of their pickups. So they're working on that um, on their end of things uh, through, their, through their customer portal. Um, the other thing we're doing is making arrangements just for the minimal pickups that we have to do. Uh, because when, with the loss of the on-street parking and given that a lot of the, the trucks are side loads uh, for the lift, side loaders, and also dumpsters, it's going to come a point in time where when that trash pickup occurs each week, uh, where we're going to have to basically shut down the road. The contractor will have to do a shutdown. Uh, for normal traffic and allow the trash trucks and the scout vehicles to basically get out in front of that, that traffic closure and run all of those accounts and get through the street to Bellflower Boulevard or Ardmore or Clark, and then they're going to have to turn around and run back down the other street. So that, in theory, is <laughs> what we've come up with already with the uh, CRNR and how it in, in terms of how to deal with the uh, the, the weekly pickups, the the multi pickups each week, uh, like I said, Crystal and CRNR and are they're they're trying to work to put together a plan to possibly consolidate some of those accounts into fewer pickups each week. But we're anticipating probably at least two or three trash truck runs uh, a, a a week when when these closures go into effect. moment that's all I have okay mr. Dutton thank you mayor how, how big is the sewer line that we're gonna reline is it a 24 inch or no smaller 18 18 and so the lateral lines that connect to it so you put this resin tube in there and you blow it up and it hardens how do you break through the lateral lines to open those up we have a robotic system that has a cutter on the end of it. They finds them? They can find them? And well, right. when we install the liner, we, we physically uh -huh. mark them on the cable before uh -huh. we install it. With our camera, we do a uh -huh. pre-video. We oh. clean the pipe, make sure everything's good. We mark on a cable, a hard uh -huh. crimp on a steel cable, as that cutter is going through there, the camera is going through there. That way, if they do not show, which they do 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of the time, mm -hmm. um, if they don't show, we have a physical marking on where that location is, so that way we can mm -hmm. find it and reinstate it. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. That's the puzzle I couldn't think about. <laughs> um, do you actually physically shut water off to any of these residents during this eight-hour phase, whatever the day, you know, when you're doing this process? Yeah, Bellflower Mutual will be shutting off water. So all the, okay, so there is no water going. I was wondering, how is it, you have a rogue toilet going or something? Yeah. Um, okay, so all the water at each property gets, so you're aware of that, mm -hmm. gets shut off. Um, can you pull the first, the first slide with the picture on it? I just want to get this pretty much on camera because these pictures are not really self-explanatory that much. Um, the picture on the left is a, is a lining, the liner, right? Yes. Is that what that's a liner coming mm -hmm. off of a, you know, that's all folded like a fire hose in that truck or trailer and then it's machined down and by pulleys and 
Precisely. Yeah. In, it's right? a refrigerated truck that's holding that liner. Um, it's wet out in our facility in Huntington mm-hmm. Beach, which means it's catalyzed. The resin and the catalyst uh-huh. are mixed together uh-huh. and pumped into that tube under mm-hmm. a vacuum. And then it gets it has to remain cold because heat will set off the chemical reaction. So oh, we keep it. it. So uh, once heat, that's what you explained. So the heat actually sets it off. It's that's correct. Chemical react. And this here is the pumps, right? Actually, those or are the, the boilers right. that are used to generate the steam. Okay, that's the it. heat. The heat. Yep. Okay, that is correct. All right. Next slide. Next uh, photo. So this is the typically. There's reason there's two lines there is for the volume of the, the line underneath. Are we going to have two lines on Ramona? You will have two, and it's not for volume. It's actually for redundancy. Oh, redundancy. Okay, yeah. one line is being used if there's a problem. Yeah, that's or, correct. So you have two pumps, an H manifold. You have or something. Or... You have two discharge pipes. That way, okay. if one pump dies, there's another pump. Gotcha. If you have one okay. pipe that leaks Backup. or fails, gets hit by a car, you have another one. That brings me a question. So the two lines going down the middle, they're kind of a black type of pipe. Is it, You're going to have barricades, I imagine, so what about a road car backing out of a driveway at 2 in the morning because they were having too much fun? If a car hits that, what happens? Hard to say. It depends on probably how hard they hit it. Well, but I imagine you've done a few of these <laughs> in residential areas, right? Oh, for sure. No, and yeah, unfortunately, they seem to always find well, the Ramona valves. Ramona can get kind of wild sometimes. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. No, they always seem to find the metal valve that, <laughs> that hits their bones. Oh, they're going right. for the metal valve. Great. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, HDP is pretty resilient. They'd have they're to pretty resilient. Pretty they're not going to come apart. Yeah. No, it wouldn't okay. come apart, and it would, okay. you'd see it. And so these pumps and this bypass system, are they bypassing for, you, I had uh, one, one week, 14 weeks, and two weeks. Are these bypassing for 14 weeks to dry it all out? Or? They're bypassing for the day that we are doing Just the only the one day. Okay, they only by, they're only turned on in one day. I got they, it. They might be on a day early uh-huh. if we need to do any pre-video, extra uh-huh. cleaning, anything like that to make sure when it's it. shut down and it's go time, we're 100% Or the ready. robot's going down there to take pictures. Exactly. Okay. And that's the 14 week portion. That's all the setup, put the infrastructure end of the bypass. Is that that's the 14 weeks of putting this together that is and correct. taking it down? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, from cutting the first trench to restoring the street, like we weren't even there. And you'll be going out on Lakewood Boulevard and Clark and Bellflower Boulevard? Not Lakewood. Not Lakewood at all. Okay. So when we cross, we're, we're totally crossing Clark and totally crossing Bellflower. Yes. Okay. Are we going to dig underneath like the picture showed and go through, or are we going to have a total road closure? Total road closure. And that'll be for a day or, or two days or a weekend? Friday evening to early Monday morning. Okay, so that, that's when you're going to do the lining. Then. Yeah, there'll be a full detour provided um, during that entire time mm-hmm. for both intersections, respectively. Because we have to get it built, and then you have to take it down. Yeah. So you're shooting for a weekend. So when the water gets shut off, is it going to be on a weekend? For you those know? two reasons. Yeah, yes. for the, for so where the blue is across it. So some on Ramona on both sides of Bellflower is going to have their water shut off for the weekend. Yes. Okay. For 12 hours, one of the days, yeah. Okay. Only 12 hours. Yes. Okay. 12 hours, when it comes, yeah. Yeah. But we don't know if it's 12 hours from 2 on or from 6 a.m. to 6 at night, or we don't know. We, we would like to do our work during the day. 6 to 6 or something like that? Something or? like that, Got yes. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what we would target. Go to the next slide. I think that was it. Next? or That was all your photos, I think, then. Okay. And back up to the, the plates, so we're not doing any of that. Then we're going to be above ground everywhere. Because we're going over Clark and we're going over Bellflower. Yeah, and then we're going across Ardmore too, yeah. And across Ardmore. Is that over Ardmore? Yes. Or, okay. So we're not going to go any underground. Uh, that was far as, that's usually like you're wondering now. So we don't know. But I'm trying to okay. think. There might be a little around Clark, but nothing through okay. the intersection. No, okay. Okay. That's pretty much all my questions. I have one more for Public Works. We might want to, once CR&R, the trash company, gets an idea of 
what they're going to do, maybe a door hanger just for the trash customers, Absolutely. you know, or something. Absolutely. So they're not surprised. And on every door, not just the ones getting their trash, because people need to know that they can't, at a certain time, they're not going to be able to get to their house or their car. Yeah, we, we, were, we were talking last week uh, okay. just about the, the, the first phase learning curve we're going to go through with okay. this one okay. when it comes to gotcha. CR&R and, and Bellflower okay. Somerset and okay. just the residents getting used to not being able to park on Ramona Street mm -hmm. and where, where that overflow is going to end up. So there's there's going to be the first phase, the first one out the gate is going to be Got it. fun. I yeah. would even think DMV is going to be affected. You come out down, you come out under Ramona to do your driving test. Hey, you're going to only be making a right turn. Yeah. And then if you're pulling back into that off of Ramona, you're going to have to come down Ardmore. It's going to affect yeah. their whole routes. Correct. Yeah, we'll we'll make sure they're well aware of that as well. And put the slide up that has the one in 14 and two weeks. Just want to be clarification on, on that. The one week is probably not impacting the neighborhood the first week because you're just mobilizing, right? Correct. And then the 14 weeks, that's when pretty much everything's going to be interrupted for, is it 14 weeks for the whole project? Start to finish, yeah. Okay, four, Okay, it's not for just each section. That is correct. The blue, the green, the gold. It's not each 14 for, okay, got it. Right. Okay, that's everything. Each, I yeah. thought it was each section. That's where yeah. my disconnect was. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, so okay. on the on the image, it has the rough area of phase one, and the duration oh, for weeks, that area is four weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah, so the total yeah. will be 14 weeks, yeah. but broken down to four phases. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little overlap with some of them just because we cannot, we have to bypass from upstream yeah, of from where we're installing and discharge manhole. below where we're yeah. finishing. So there's okay. a little bit of overlap on the start okay. to finish of each shot. In the last two weeks, that's just for breaking it down? or Final restoration, final rest striping, okay. gotcha. paving, capping, you gotcha. know, little okay. odds and ends if needed. And it almost seems like our sanitation guy was... Um, he knew about the senior houses, housing. You know there's two of them on there, that street? I believe so. I have okay. to go back and look at them. You were told there was two. Okay, there's two of them. There's one a little further, so. If the first one that's up against the parking lot, commercial parking lot, is not an impact, we want to make sure you know about the other one. Yeah, the second one shouldn't be because it's further east. Yes, okay. So that's if it's east of Bellflower, then yeah. it shouldn't be an issue. Shouldn't be an issue? No. Shouldn't. Okay. Yeah. Should not. So you're only... Ramona, east of Bellflower. So you're only going for what? How 100 feet or 200 feet? For barely past that Jack in the Box driveway. Just barely. Okay. Okay. My impression you were going a lot further. Okay. No, we have a little tiny bit of work down Ramona and Woodruff, mm -hmm. or Tisha and Woodruff. Sorry. Um, but yeah. It, okay. There's a senior center just east so of the, that picture in, is. Okay. Which, so this section of Ramona is really not getting impacted. Yeah. yeah the, it's mainly the, from Bellflower to the the footprint <laughs> is that the tapering of the traffic control will extend to about four gotcha. or five residential properties past the commercial lot where you're talking the about. Trail so gate. that's where you're gonna the impacts to those properties are gonna be the loss of the on street parking. Got it. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you. All right, Mr. Saninez. You want uh, to thank you, Mr. Thoughts? Mayor. Okay. Yeah, continue my thoughts. Two two things. One, I heard uh, I heard you say you would like to do your work during the day. What would stop you from doing it at night when people when the resident, especially the shutdown, when the residents are sleeping? We could, but there our process unfortunately is not silent. Oh, okay. um, so you're kind of picking pick your it's battle there between noise or or day. Mm -hmm. You know, water impact during the day. <laughs> okay. All right, fair well enough. Said. Fair enough. Well said. Well said. Yeah. I mean, okay. You've been asked that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's prepared for that. Um, I'll definitely give you another reason why I think you should reverse your process or your like direction. Your timing on when you. I mean, if if you were to start anywhere in June, you're looking at back to school by the time you hit all the more of the residential side, and I I think that's going to be a nightmare for everyone. So just another food for thought. You know, your back to school is around the time that you would hit the more residential section. Because you see to the, to the east, it's more, it, I mean, there are residents, but 
you see you got the bigger church lots, you got the empty lot, you got the commercial site. So I'm just, you know, something to consider. I don't know how that would impact your ability or not, if that's simple. I mean, but I, I, I am concerned about that. You know, you're hitting back to school time. Ryan, I, I think he's just talking about reversing your phases. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I mean, we could go east to west, west to east. I, it doesn't really impact us too much. Yeah. Um, the pink phase four down there, which is five weeks, there are no water shutoffs in that area at all. Um, but I have a feeling it's more traffic control than water impact that you're talking for back to school right. and stuff like that. So right. exactly, especially because there's schools on Clark. That yeah. Clark has traveled a lot for for schools. Yeah, we so, we could so prioritize right, that. They're about to go into summer, and so I think it just you know makes sense. Yeah, we can knock that out first and, and move east. Yeah. But she said phase four has no water shut off. Correct. Does have water shut off. One, two, and three. How come there's no water shut off on phase yeah. four? Phase four doesn't have any lateral connections into the oh. county sand sewer. Oh, the oh. part you're repairing, okay. And that one's exceptionally long. There's uh, quite a few siphons underneath mm -hmm. Clark that also have to be done, and those take quite a bit of time mm -hmm. to do. Is there another sewer line in the ground next to it? Because there is got to be some kind of sewers on that street in there. I'm sure there's probably lines. some local oh, sewers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. Okay, that's it. Victor, you okay? I'm good. Yeah, thank right, you, Spring. Right. Well, thank you so much for the presentation. Good questions. It's hard for me to find any other question to ask. <laughs> But anyway, just for clarification, can you educate me on the liner? So when you install the liner, you blow it with water, with pressure? Yeah, so there's two different methods to install. You can use water to invert it, okay. or you can blow it through with compressed air. Okay. Does the liner stick into the pipe? It, when you blow it through the pipe, you then put a canister on the far end mm -hmm. and pressurize it. So then it expands out tight against the hose pipe. creating. So a, it will not sag anymore? I'm sorry. Once you blow it, blow it in, blow it water with or air pressure, mm -hmm. uh, it will not sag anymore. It will just stick to the pipe. It, it will stay there. We maintain constant pressure, and then we introduce steam into that airflow, okay. which will kick off the resin, hardening it. What if later on there's no more pressure? Will it, will the liner continue to stick to the pipe? Oh yes. Once the liner is cured, it is a full structural pipe within the pipe. The original pipe could vanish, <laughs> disappear. And we still have a structural conduit oh, within the okay. ground. Within the ground. So basically, it's kind of like an epoxy, so to speak. It Similar. sticks to the pipe. Okay. Similar. All right, that's good because I'm worried about when there's no more water pressure being flushed into the toilet. You know, mm -hmm. so there's no more water. Uh, will the um, will the integrity of the liner be still there? 100 percent. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, just clarification in terms of the the closure. Um, it will only be about two hours per residential area, or will it extend beyond 12 hours? So, for example, let's say um, you're working on the purple area. So if I'm living somewhere in this area, so I'll be inconvenienced only 12 hours one time. Yes, for your water service, the yes. Water service, okay. Yes. But in terms of traffic, it will be the duration of four weeks. Yes, for the whole area. It will be being installed over the course and being taken down over the course, but that four weeks is, is kind of it's the maximum. earmarking it. Yeah. It's the uh, maximum. Uh, okay. Things, yeah. But you could be done sooner than four weeks. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If they, if they install the bypass and get it all tested within a week, I come in for a day and they restore it all and move it down the street in a week, then we're out of there, you know, in two and a half weeks. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. Good. So. Uh, And what's the thickness of the of the liner? I have to go back and look at my notes. How many? It's on the order of millimeters. So it's very thin. Very thin, yeah. Oh wow. Oh okay. If you're going to address, you got to come to the mic. You want to come up? Yeah. Well, each shot is designed specifically for the soil conditions, the uh -huh. condition of the pipe in that area. So dead load, live load, groundwater table. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into the design of the liner, but yeah, it, like Leon said, it's in, it's in the order of millimeters. So it's like 10 and a half, 
12, 13 and a half millimeters okay. in that ballpark. So you mentioned earlier that this technology has been around for 40 years now? Long time. And the life is 50 years? Mm -hmm. So you haven't done a second relining? Never had to reline a pipe. Okay, very good. <laughs> That's what I asked. Okay, thank you so much. All right, good. Sunny, I don't think you'll be here to watch it anyway. <laughs> I, I intend to. I intend to. Okay. That's the plan. Okay. <laughs> You're a true optimist. So if, is there any other questions or we can uh, dismiss our yep. presentation? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. you, thank you very you. much. Thank very you very much for your time. I want to say thank you to Len and to Frank. They've been great to work with on this. No, so they, I appreciate kind of all that. they carry our feelings about what's going on, especially that one about reversing the order might really have an impact that will uh, – Victor's got a good point about schools and school starting. So. And great questions. We'll definitely take a look at that. All right. Thank you very thank much you. for your time. All right. Public comments, Mr. Smoot. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is the time set aside for the public to address the City Council on matters not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the City Council should come to the podium, be recognized by the Mayor, and state your name for the record. If you wish to address the City Council on an agenda item, you may do so by approaching the podium as we review that particular item, and you'll be given three minutes to address the City Council. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sign everybody in to save some time. Okay. You're writing your married name, your maiden name, your middle name? I <laughs> <laughs> have to write all their titles. All right. All right. <laughs> Well, I know you have a name like Princess Di that's five words, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the lines aren't long enough. <laughs> yeah. Lucky we haven't started the clock yet. <laughs> <laughs> Your time's up, sorry. I know, right? <laughs> Oops. Almost there. You know, next time you come, you can actually fill that out before you come up. You know, that sounds like a good <laughs> idea. And, all right, I think I got everybody. Okay, I just have a little thing prepared. Okay, hello, Belfire and City Council members. <laughs> My name is Eden Escobedo, the Miss Belfire pageant pre president. I'm here to share about an event that occurred in Belfire, which was the 2024 Miss Belfire pageant. We had a great time and great attendance at this year's pageant. I'd like to take a moment to publicly Thank our dignitaries that attended and the visiting royal royalties from our local cities, including the city of Artesia, Compton, Southgate, Linwood, and Tustin. We also had many past Miss Bellflower royalty and from various years. And a big thank you to all of the family and friends that came out to support the program. I would also like to publicly thank and congratulate the 2022 Miss and Miss Teen Bellflower Courts for a fantastic reign serving our community. Here with me today is the 2024 Miss and Miss Teen Bellflower Courts, and they are excited to introduce themselves. Good evening, my name is Allie Morris, and I am your 2024 Miss Teen Bellflower Princess. Hi. Good evening, my name is Paradise McGifford, and I am Bellflower's Miss 2024 Queen, Teen Queen. Thank you. Good evening, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more than them, <laughs> but my name is Jacqueline Espejo, and I am your 2024 Miss Bellflower Queen. 
Um, I've had the honor of serving the city for the past three years as an employee, um, and I've also been able to do this pageant in the past as well, um, and I have the honor of coming back as your queen. Um, I'm super excited to see what this year holds, and it's really an honor to stand here in front of you all today, so thank you so much. So, I th you know, because you girls have gotten all dressed up and come down here and spent time with us and listened to all this sewer stuff, <laughs> <laughs> What I'd like to do, we're going to have the council stand over here on the riser, and we're going to take a picture with you, because you've earned that. Very patient ladies. Sounds like a little Just go. <laughs> so I'm going to do one more call on public comments. I didn't get any response before except for the girls from the court. And uh, if not, we're going to move on to our next part of our agenda. All right. Public hearings, we have none. Ordinances, resolutions, uh, none. Considerations item 13A, Mr. Smoot. I'm going to let Mr. Grecky take this item. Him again? If you're ready. <laughs> well, in all fairness, that was that was the county's project. No, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when things go south, we're as coming much after as you. I want to try to deflect those bullets because I know they're coming my way here for the next three months. Um, yeah, that's that's the county's. About vacation time for you, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. Uh, before you tonight, we have a consideration item, uh, the possible action to adopt Resolution 24-24, uh, which would authorize the addition, uh, authorize additional positions uh, within the Public Works Department uh, that would be effective on July 1st um, for um, what would essentially be a, a weekend response crew that we would put together um, in public works to handle uh, weekend responses to both graffiti as well as um, bulky item pickup uh, would be, you know, the top priorities for us. Um, coming off of this last four-day weekend, it's a prime example of uh, what, what, can, what can take place um, with, with graffiti and, and the, the issues we're faced with when we, when we come back. Uh, in the day after a long weekend or, or a vacation holiday. So Albino, our graffiti guy, was busy beyond no, believe, no, no relief uh, today. Um, we were also picking up bulky items for the majority of the day. So my, my crew was on today was basically playing catch-up from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, and yesterday. So <clears throat> the, the idea here is to develop a, a new crew, that would serve um, 
on the the Friday rotations off, they would that crew of four would be here, and it would be comprised of a, a crew leader, as well as a most likely a maintenance one or a maintenance two uh, position, and then two part time uh, public works uh, maintenance employees. The idea is the uh, graffiti uh, crew leader would run the graffiti rig with a part-time uh, helper, and then the bulky items, just because of the nature of their size, I always need to, I need two workers to, to deal with the, that load. And then outside of those, you know, they're not going to spend nine hours a day. They'll, they'll get through their workload. Outside of that, they're just handling normal public works duties. They're emptying boulevard trash cans that tend to get you know, one pizza box can can <laughs> can ruin an entire street for for a couple of days. So uh, there there is there are plenty of of uh, task uh, for them to to do over the weekends. Um, but that that certainly there will be no shortage of work uh, for this crew. Um, the the cost the the proposed staffing cost uh, for year one for this uh, for this crew. Um, is at three hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars, and again, that's that's two full-time employees as well as two part-time employees. Uh, then we have our associated graffiti cost uh, to run to run the machines, the paint, the supplies, the the rigs, uh, and all that. Uh, also, at this point in time, I would be requesting the authorization to place the order for a new graffiti truck. Our current graffiti truck um, is a 2015. It, it obviously takes uh, a fair uh, a fair amount of abuse and, and usage uh, throughout the day. It, it's um, it Albino does again. I, I can't give enough accolades to Albino. He's he's probably the greatest uh, graffiti abatement guy that I'll I'll ever know in my public works career. Um, he does an incredible job of keeping. Uh, care of his his rig but you have pumps you have sprayers you have stuff that goes out when it does go out it's down for a day or two um so the idea here is because there's such a long lead time with this with these rigs anywhere from 10 to 12 months from the point that i order it i would be requesting authorization at this point from the council to go ahead and place that order uh, for one of those trucks to put a spec together um, and to fly the spec and get the order put together and uh, get that going. So we will have uh, a secondary truck online probably with, within a year's time. And that's just graffiti rigs. We have the other equipment to handle uh, the bulky item stuff. We have, we have the trucks, we have the lift gates and, and so forth. Um, so with that, uh, my recommendation to the council would be the adopt resolution number 2424, authorizing additional positions with the Public Works Department. Uh, the second uh, would be to incorporate a budget amendment to reflect the addition of one full-time crew leader, one full-time maintenance worker, and two part-time maintenance workers, and other related costs. Uh, or three, alternatively, discuss and take other action as the council sees fit. With that, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Thanks for the presentation. It all makes sense. Now, you need to go out and hire additional bodies to fill these positions, correct? My, my, my first preferred choice right off the bat is to utilize my staff that I have uh, working for us already and just have a conversation with the staff and see who's interested in doing the promotions. Because uh, there's there, we, I, have a, I have a great growing group of, of public works maintenance workers. Some, some are at the part-time level right now. Some have made it to the ones. They're all eager. They're young. They're looking to promote. So there's going to be a great opportunity for internal candidates to uh, promote into some of these positions. So my preference right off the bat is to utilize my staff that I have, make, make the offers uh, available to existing staff to become part of this weekend crew and if, if nothing comes from that, then I would explore the opportunity of doing a recruitment outside. But first and foremost, internal, always. So, so it's, you're going to try to utilize the same amount of it, bodies? No, 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 no. no, no. This is, I'm requesting two new full-time okay, bodies. Got, yeah. got, I didn't want you having to pay overtime to people that are working 40 hours, five days a week, and then you say, okay, now you're going to work the weekends. No. You're going to just burn them up. 
No, these, these would be two full-time, brand new, full-time positions that do not exist in the department currently. So how does that go when you got a, and I know you have a fantastic graffiti removal gentleman, and that truck is oriented towards his needs and wants, and he does a great job with it, and he'd have a lot of input on the new truck, which he'd probably duplicate much what he has. Is there, how does that go when you put a different person on that truck on the weekend that he's utilized during the five other days? Um, does that go okay? It, it goes okay now because when, when Albino leaves to go on vacation or he's off for a day or two, uh, you know, graffiti abatement still needs to take place. Right. Um, I have more than a handful of guys that know how to run and operate the equipment. They're, okay. they're also all pretty keen on uh, how Albino feels about his equipment. No, so they, gonna... they take very good care of it, and, and they, they try their best to leave it as they found it. And, um, you know, it's, it's worked out pretty good. I haven't had to... You know, I haven't had any major issues resulting in misuse of the equipment. You can understand my concern that some uh, people are not as conscientious as the original guy. Absolutely. And I wondered whether or not it would have merit to keep the other truck for weekends and get him a new one for the weekdays. Well, and and that that certainly could be planned. The, the first and foremost, I have to get the darn thing ordered just because right, of the lead, that, lead time of it and stuff. But, yeah, once I have two in the fleet, then I figure out which one goes into weekday service, which one – serves as backup or weekend service. We'll, we'll get that arranged. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all my questions this time. Uh, since you were last last time, Mr. Sandy Inez, we're going to make you first this time. We, we flushed out all the questions before so you got them. the last will be time. first this time, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Greg, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I really appreciate the work that public work staff do uh, each and every day. So I have a couple of questions just for clarification. So the, the part-time employees, how many hours will they work on average per week? Uh, they, they're, they're typically scheduled for 29 hours a week. 29 hours, yeah. okay. Correct. Right. So basically they're going to be working on roughly five days every two weeks, right? They won't be, yes, yeah, correct. Every two, because correct. I'm alternating They're, they're not working the full schedule um, that the the full timers would work. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They'll they'll be here on the weekends. They'll be here for those for the full set of hours. Right. For the then five. during the weekdays when I have other part time staff here, I don't necessarily need them for a full day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Um, do me a favor because um, your staff do a lot of work, and in this um, in the staff report, it doesn't fully document what this work weekend crew is because from the outset, it might look like they're only working on weekends, which is not the case. Correct. Uh, I want to do justice for them. I want to make sure that this is memorialized that the two, especially the two full-time employees, that they're working more than the weekends. So I want to document that. Because Correct. if you, again, if you look at the staff report, it appears like they only work on weekends, which is not the case. So I want to be fair to them. I want to recognize their work. So I want to make sure that it's either memorialized to the minutes or the staff report that it's not just weekend. The full-time employees also work during the week. Correct? correct. Yes, you're, you're correct, uh, okay. Council Member Sandy. Yes. All right. Yeah. With that, thank you so much again for all the work that you do. Uh, I've been asking for this especially for the graffiti for quite some time, and I'm glad that it's coming before us tonight. So thank you. Mr. Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Len, for the uh, presentation. I think that... Uh, you know, one, I'm excited by this. I think the proactiveness of it, and it's unfortunate that we have the issues that we have when it comes to graffiti, when it comes to bulky items and other things that linger like that, especially on holiday, like on long weekends. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, well, not at the end of the day, but we do get a lot of compliments during the week when it's handled because uh, like Sunny uh, member Sunny Ness mentioned, you know, the crew's exceptional. I mean, they are out there, they're, they're seeing, they get the job done. I think by the time I text you at 7.30 in the morning about something, you know, it's 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 usually already gone before I even text you because I'm texting you because I saw it the night before and, mm -hmm. and so forth, and it's gone by the time I, you know, drive out to, to take my kid to school and, and, and stuff like that. And so the crew is great, and, and for us to be able to have the ability to bring it to the weekend and to just not allow for it to linger um, – over those weekends, I think it's going to be great for, for the community. So um, 
I, I totally see the need for another truck, um, especially when those do when it does break down. So I'm I'm supportive of that as well. Um, and I think the if I can, I think this having this tonight, I think also opens up the conversation as to a later date, a later later conversation as to what it looks like for us to have conversations as to partnering with the businesses um, that are getting graffiti all the time. You know, we've done some partnerships like on Los Angeles and Clark, and that's worked out really well. Um, things like that, that kind of prevent graffiti, because I think we have to do, we have to attack this from both angles. So I just want to put that out there, take the opportunity to say that we need to have a bigger conversation on that at a later date. Um, okay, then that's it, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Ms. Morris, you got a question, answer. I, I'm more just, is it the same crew every weekend that works, or will they alternate, like different different sets of crews? No, th this this crew will, will be the set crew. Okay. So their, their work day will be our Friday, the normal Friday off. Mm -hmm. They will be on. Then they will work a Saturday. They will work a Sunday. They will work a Monday, a Tuesday. And then Wednesday would be their rotation day. Um, so where, where most of the city employees rotate on a, on a Friday, the rotation day would be Wednesday, which is fine because we're, we're fully staffed on a Wednesday. Yeah, there's, there's other than holidays, there's nothing that impacts a Wednesday schedule. So, You think you have staff already that will be chomping at the bit to work weekends? Yeah, if I was going to bet a nickel, I'd bet a lot of them. All right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I guess that's yes. So, <laughs> any other questions, no, Wendy? No other questions. That was exactly my question. So you're looking. You're gonna. You're gonna promote two people to to do this. Is what your at initial goal is. My, is my, you're gonna my dangle the carrot of a promotion to have somebody work absolutely. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, it, it would be. An, we would. I would do an internal recruit. Does is the union contract? Does it say that it's overtime just on weekends, or is it only thing still over forty hours? Is, what I'm trying to think what yeah, the incentive I is. I don't know specifically what the, what oh, the it's, MOU it's currently sets, but it doesn't matter then. It, it, they it wouldn't they wouldn't be working more than forty hours unless they were assigned okay. to work okay. overtime, which is similar gotcha. to how we rotate now. Do you see? If you got volunteers and they do it and they're whatever, and you can see, you know, eight months down the road or whatever, if, you know, is it something they can't come back or, the, or George? I guess what I'm saying is a rotation or having a backup crew or something to have somebody have weekends off that has families or something. It's uh, I'll I'll say this. I, I think because this is something that's going to be very new that the city's mm -hmm. never gone down this path before. You know, recently or at least in my time. I would like to keep a very consistent crew in there just so we can get a, a true idea of what What's really going goes on. on right, yeah, at first. But okay, yeah. yeah, you know, it's going to be a learning curve. Yeah, yeah and, and what goes on a year, two years outside of that, yeah. I don't know. But yeah. it, it's going to take a, a time to mm -hmm. figure out, you know, their, their ability to respond, you know, what we're seeing on the weekends. Um, yeah, we know what needs to be done on the weekends. We all, I think, all yeah. of us up here <laughs> agree with you. I, yeah, I know, I know. My my phone, my phone knows. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's, but anyway, yeah, just having somebody volunteer to work weekends is is you know someone that's been working for the city of Bellflower and having every other Friday off and every Saturday and Sunday off and every holiday that follows it. It just it seems little too little good more. to be true <laughs> yeah well again yeah we will run an internal yeah. recruitment yeah. Right. and you know that's the best the, way to I, go. I may yeah. get i may get five employees mm -hmm. uh i may get nobody yeah. i i'm gonna bet that i'm gonna get a handful of guys and that, you know that want yeah. that want to promote yeah. and and take this opportunity mm -hmm. to to present themselves as an employee in this mm -hmm. position these are both going to be very important positions because they're not under the watchful eye of and public got, works like they are right now. The you know, Leroy <laughs> and Steve, myself, you know, we, we keep a very keen eye on everything that's going on all day long. So this is going to be a huge responsibility for those employees to, to go and do their work unchecked. So I think there's I think I have guys uh, that are members of the public works team right now 
that can mm-hmm. step up and do this. I'm, I'm okay. fairly confident. And I think it's a, it's a great step forward for us to be able to have weekend coverage. And, uh, and I'm all for the, the new graffiti truck. So, Dan, remember when we asked for the graffiti truck? You know, it was like, well, 2000, it's a 2015, so we ordered it a year in advance. So they were begging for a new truck back then, and I can't believe it's already worn out. It's, oh. it, well, the other one was worn out. Right. <laughs> well, it works every day, and it's, it's an important yeah. tool. Mm-hmm. Yep. But you can sense how excited all council members are to be able to have that coverage because, like you, on Monday, we look around at what's happened over the three-day holiday or this four-day weekend yeah. that we just went through, and it's, it's, it, it's embarrassing almost. But I think that the optics of having city workers working on Saturday and Sunday are really going to help everyone know that we're trying our best to maintain a good community because how many other cities are going to have guys out yeah. there with a marked truck with a uniform on taking out graffiti mm-hmm. on a Sunday morning? I mean, that is really special. And uh, luckily, we have the economics to pull it off at this point in time. So let's make the community better with that money. That's my opinion. So with back to the bulky item pickup, because I am banking on the next uh, um, CR&R contract or whatever, we have the bulky pickup Correct. more under control. So. I don't think it's ever going to be under control. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, more, that's I said more under control. More under control. <laughs> yeah, we're we're you know, uh, I we're yeah. hitting it with everything yeah. we have. Whether yeah. it's the the CR the CR and R uh, a future fran- mm-hmm. franchise amendment, um, or the the weekend staff or, mm-hmm. or my staff that are running, you know, mm-hmm. that are running it right now. You know, mm-hmm. I'm I'm, right. I'm I'm more trying to process where am I going to put room for these roll off containers. Mm-hmm in my yard uh, for this bulky items because I'm, I'm about, we're going to probably double, triple our loads each each week right now is what I'm anticipating. Good. That means it's getting off the streets. Yep. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, as far as the, the bulky item, then that's, if, we, if that starts, if we get more bulky items off the street with our trash franchise contractor, then we can free up our public works guys to do more public works stuff. Correct. That are working the weekends. I think it's a great idea, and it's time we did something like this, Sonny. And Sonny's idea is to try to get weekend coverage for a long time. It's here. Thank wow. you. Okay, with that, are there any public comments? Anybody want to come forward and tell us we're doing the right thing, the wrong thing, or leave it alone? Or Do we don't want to hear from a princess? <laughs> <laughs> You want to be on television? Here's your spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if no one wants to comment on it, we're going to move on to, uh, let's put this to a vote. Well, first I'd like to make a motion. Before well, that's vote. what I mean. To I'll say. second that. <laughs> let's put it to a motion. I'd like to make a motion to, um, for the City Council of Belfar to adopt Resolution 24-24, a resolution authorizing additional positions within the Public Works Department, effective July 1st, 2024, and funding for other related costs. And second. What about the truck? Did you, does that yeah. include? Other related costs. Okay. It's all inclusive. I'll okay. second that, Mr. Mayor. All right. So we have a motion by Council Member Sonny Santianez and supported by Council Member Victor Sanchez. Uh, please pull the council. Mr. Mayor, just for clarification, there is a number two listed oh. under recommendation. Just want to make sure that that is included. It was. Which is and budget amend- right. amendment, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, right. and incorporate a budget amendment to reflect the addition oh, of one full-time yeah. crew leader, one full-time maintenance worker, one slash two, two part-time maintenance work positions, and other related costs. Again, all right. Second, second. All right, we, we're official now. Now, Thank please you. poll the council. Councilmember Sanchez. Aye. Councilmember Santanez. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dutton. Aye. Councilmember Morse? Aye. Mayor Coops? Aye. All right, now we're down to the consent calendar. Do we have any recusals or conflicts? But I'm going to talk a little bit about 14H, which is a slurry seal on various streets, including city owned air alleyways. For the record, Council Members Dutton, Morse, and I are conflicted out on item 14H due to property conflicts. Luckily, neither Victor nor 
Council Member Sanchez, I mean, uh, <laughs> San Inez or not. So we are uh, due to property conflicts. At the regular city council meeting on April 8th, 2024, lots were drawn to determine who would participate in that matter, and I was selected to participate. So uh, I'll be a part of that discussion if there is one. Um, now, going to, does anyone have any conflicts on any of the consent calendar items? I have a conflict on 14E and 14G and H, as you just said, um, all employment related. Okay, so you're out on 14E, G, 14G, and, and 14H. And Mayor, I have conflicts on 14E and 14H, property conflicts. All right, so the record shows 14E and 14H for Mr. Dutton. He is out. And uh, I'm out too here. Let me see what I wrote down here. On 14E, I am out because I have a uh, potential... Um, Business association with the with the uh, agent, and on 14F, I'm out um, because I've got uh, property near the road repair. So I'm out on 14E and 14F, and um, there are three council members inflicted on 14E. So we'll need to draw lots to determine who will participate in that matter. City Clerk, have you prepared the lots? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we will draw lots on 14E to determine who will participate in that matter. Okay. Um, here first is Council Member, sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Dutton. <laughs> Mr. Dutton will be a part of 14E. Oh, but we're still, we're, we still need to draw. Uh, uh, <laughs> She's oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm putting them in. Shoot. <laughs> she hasn't drawn in yet. Here's Council Member Moore. Oh, I thought you were just trying to go. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> have to and your best first. penmanship too. So, <laughs> show first. I'm ready to award it to him, you know. And Mayor Coops. <laughs> oh, Coops, yeah. Okay. Oh, him. Yeah. <laughs> now we will draw. All right. Well, we'll mix them up, all three of them up really well. You yes. Know. Yeah. Give it my best shot here. Yeah, blindfold would be appropriate. Yeah. And Council Member Morse will participate. A lucky you. Lucky me. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. All right. Um, it, are you guys uh, okay e. over here? 14E, Victor. 14E. 14E, we've got three people that can vote on that now. Um, so how should we do this? Uh, are we going to do those specifically, or are we just approve the consent calendar? How do we do this so we're all in agreement? That well, we got to pull them. All right. I'd like to pull item 14E since you draw the lot anyway. And Mr. to make use of it. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull item D and <laughs> and uh, L. D. Did you say Victor? D. 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 D as in dog and L as in Larry. 14 D and L for Victor. And say again what you're doing, Sonny. Uh, 14 E. E. 14 E, like Edward, is for. You walk. <laughs> All right. So, would it be best if I leave the room at this point, or mm -hmm. not yet? Remainder. All right. So, uh, do we have a motion to accept the balance of the consent calendar? Yeah, I'll move the balance of the consent calendar, excluding the conflicts. Second. So, All right. Sorry. So we have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Ray Dutton. And it's supported by Council Member Victor Sanchez. Please pull the council. Council Member Sanchez? Aye. Council Member Santanez? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dutton? Aye. Council Member Morse? Aye. Mayor Coops? Aye. All right, so we got that out of the way. Um, now, how do we do this? Well, I'm, I'm out and you're, you're out. You're out, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sonny, are you up for be, uh, running this part of the... Sure. Okay, you haven't forgotten? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never. So would you like me and Mr. Dutton to leave the room? Would that be appropriate? Okay. 
Are we going to do the we're just e. 14 e. e first? Yeah, we're doing 14, 14. Uh, E. We're out on. and. But how about yours? And you got H after that. E and, e and Why don't we do uh, Victor's first? You can do me first. Yeah. You can still be here. Okay, so Victor, what's your question? Uh, what you All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. On 14D, I, I just want to compliment staff first off, uh, just the initiative on this, but I, if they can provide a bit of a summary and just kind of what the thought process is here, and then and then I have a question based off of that, essentially. Sure. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council, Council Member Sanchez, just to give you a brief summary of this item. so. Uh, the city manager recently um, had a conversation with me regarding submitting legislative letters, and he mentioned that it would be um, advisable to have a legislative platform that the city council would adopt so we can submit legislative letters on previously approved issues and um, affairs that the city council has established um, a certain position on or um, sorts of topics that the City Council would support and topics that the City Council would oppose. So what you have before you tonight is actually a legislative platform that staff has um, prepared and we've looked at the Contract Cities legislative platform along with the Cal Cities or League of California Cities legislative platform that they have and we've looked at previous um, stances that the City Council has um, uh, stances the City Council has previously had on certain issues. So we've um, taken all that into consideration and just compiled it into a legislative platform. So there's actually um, certain categories of the legislative platform. So we have local control, fiscal sustainability, public safety, economic development, local land use, um, housing and homelessness, infrastructure, and general government. So that's how the legislative platform is organized. And tonight, um, this is what staff is proposing, but we can, you know, add, edit, amend this as the city council sees fit. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Travis. Um, I read through the uh, legislative um, platform. I, I, so what my understanding is essentially is if anything under these guidelines comes before the city manager's office, you guys are able to expedite a letter of support or opposition without essentially having to wait for it to be seen by council. That's yeah, correct. Oftentimes we get a request from contract cities or from Cal cities to send a, a letter of support uh, or opposition for a particular bill. And it's easier for us to do that in a quick manner. Sometimes they need those things mm -hmm. next day if possible. And it's easier for us to do that if we have a pre-approved platform. You'll notice a lot of these things are topics you've discussed in the past, some mm -hmm. of which are the same reasons you're considering a charter amendment, for instance, local control, public safety enhancements, et cetera. That's why we're laying all this out. So it's there ready for when we go to draft a letter of opposition or support for something, we have something we can refer back to and say the city council has already given us direction on this. Right, and I think that's where I, I want to commend the um, initiative on this because I think you're absolutely right. One, things always come or the needs of the request for these letters come quickly, rather quickly oftentimes. Um, and, and so my then question becomes to add this or to amend this or even actually have a study on this at a certain date what would be the process for that moving forward? Ideally, um, I would like to bring you something approximate to this uh, at the start of a legislative year. So okay. this is something I would expect that you'd see at least annually, even though the legislator usually works on a two-year calendar. I would bring this to you on an annual basis, either part of our budget process or towards the end of the year before the legislature goes back mm -hmm. in, in January. So we have a set of positions ready to go as we start doing that. That's usually when it starts to ramp up. Perfect. Ideally, I'd like to wait until maybe after if we go up for contract cities for their legislative tour in which is usually January timeframe, we get an idea of what the legislators look or legislators and our legislators specifically are looking at for the coming year. We can amend this and incorporate some of those things so that we can act on those things quickly when they need us to. Wonderful. Yeah, I, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to highlight this because we've never done something like this. No, and it's I think very this proactive. Is proactive in nature and I, I think it needs to be highlighted. Um, and especially for the purposes of when we do go up to to advocate on our on behalf of our city, we have a um, now we have a, a strong plan, um, and so I just want to commend staff on that. So thank you very much for bringing this forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That thank concludes you. my comments on 14D. Mr. Mayor, um, can I can I just jump in on that? Sure. Uh, again, thank you so much for bringing this up and being proactive about this. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask is, can you post in the website so at least people know? 
what our position is. Yeah, certainly. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, now would it be time for Dutton and I to leave since we... Oh, you got another one. Okay. 14 L, yep, that's yours. Thank you, I believe this is... Sorry, 14 L, this is for Mr. Gorecki. Um, just, uh, 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 Mr. Gorecki, if you can provide a quick summary. I, I read through the scope of work from uh, Muni Environmental on this. Um, my question is, what percentage of this scope of work is going to be related to educating the community on on this trash bill or on this um, SB 1383? 1383, 1383, thank you. Well, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll ask uh, my management analyst, Melanie Paz, to come up to the podium and kind of explain a little bit of what we're looking at here. She's uh, she came tonight, even though she knew it was on consent calendar. So lucky for her, she gets to <laughs> she gets to answer some of these questions. Yes, thank you so much, Councilmember Sanchez. Um, it'll be about to forty percent about educating. Um, so what the consultant actually does is they'll go out to tier one, tier two businesses, let them know about SB thirteen eighty three, all that is um, required for them to uh, be compliant with SB thirteen eighty three, um, as well as reporting on the grant um, itself. So that is the what the consultant will be doing. And the grant, so these funds that we're allocating um, or that are gonna be paying from Uni Environmental was a state grant, correct? Correct. So it's we're a, a pass through at this point. We're not necessarily, this isn't coming out of general fund? Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, this is a pass through. It's a Calvary Cycle grant. Uh, we received the second wave of it and with that second wave, uh, we will more than cover what our expected um, allocation would be to this consultant. And will Uni Environmental play a role in, in helping the businesses and the residents um, comply with the regulation or enroll in making sure that they're um, to yes. pace? Or to yes, okay. of course. So SB 1383, I'm sure everybody's, you know, hey, right. what is SB 1383? Um, so what our consultant is going to do is not only educate them, making sure that they are um, also doing what their requirements are in order to meet the SB 1383 mandate. Um, so that would be going back with the uh, business owner and making sure that they're up to date with compliance. And if there are some areas that aren't as compliant as they should be, um, that they would educate them. Um, although the state is in an enforcement period, um, our goal is to educate our residents and our business owners so that we don't have to get to any of those uh, places as far as enforcement goes. Um, when does the enforcement period begin? Um, it's already in the enforcement period okay. as far as the state goes, um, but the city hasn't gotten that far. We want to make sure that we educate our residents before imposing any enforcement on them. So curious on that note, when, at what point do we have to, are we legally mandated by the state and forced to start enforcement? That would be up to the city itself. Uh -huh. um, so it, it just follows on whatever the city would like. Per currently, we were just wanting to uh, really educate our business owners as well as our residents. Like I said, it's a really new mandate. Um, things are changing, so we want to make sure everybody's up to speed. So the direction here is 40% education, 60% in, or 20% in uh, uh, reporting, and then the remainder 40% would be enforcement? Um, well, Correct. So, so just real, real quick, let me interject. Sorry. So, in, in addition to the the outreach that uh, Muni Environmental does, um, there's a lot of other components of the 1383 requirement. Right. They have to perform audits. They have to perform landfill audits. Um, he is an integral part right now in writing um, the amendments to our to our franchise agreement that we have. Um, specifically for the 1383 requ requirements themselves. So the consultant in this case is, <clears throat> you know, in addition to the outreach and boots on the ground and talking to the business owners and, and kind of giving them some tips and recommendations on how to uh, correctly implement the 1383 requirements He's doing a lot of the reporting for mm -hmm. us as well. He's doing. He's working through our 1383 annual report, our quarterly reports that we have to submit to Cal Recycle. He works hand in hand with Cal Recycle staff on on just a litany list of things that they're doing. Melanie's correct. Technically, we are in an enforcement period right now. Um, we have not had to necessarily track 
go down that track yet with any of our customers because we're still growing mm -hmm. our program itself. So we're, we just rolled out the last couple months uh, the 1383 component to the multifamily, the five or more units. It generates about two months worth of calls for us from, from customers trying to figure out what's, why they have to do this, why do they have to have a green mm -hmm. cart now. So we have, it, it, it's a process. It's, an, it, it's almost like an ongoing educational process. Right, of course. That, whether it's staff in-house or the consultant or CRNR themselves. Um, Perfect. And then just one last question. So Muni Environmental is acting as our QA, for, for example, making sure that we as a city are in compliance. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, for, you for your report today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, so we got 14 D and L out, and we're going to leave the room for 14 E, and Wendy will stay behind. And H. Uh, Mr. Well, leave first, and you guys do H, you're Mr. Mayor, I, I need a motion and a vote on D and L. We discussed them, but we didn't vote on them independently. All right, so... Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion on I made, items. I made the motion to, for the whole, except for the conflicts. We oh, did that, already. That's right, yeah. We did yeah, already. I thought we were covering yeah. that. But not the DNL, because we paid yeah. DNL. I said the balance of the calendar, excluding the conflicts. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, it's the hey, clerk, are you okay with the, what we yeah. approved? Did or do you want us to give us your redo? I'm sorry, I understood that uh, the balance with the exclusion of the ones that were pulled. All right, so right. then we've approved everything. Well, let's just do it. Why don't you just give it to us so we're all clear yeah, and everything is right. okay. approved? Clear. All right, make Thank a motion. <laughs> make the motion. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve items uh, 14D and 14L. I have a second a motion. All right, so we have a motion by uh, Council Member Victor Sanchez, supported by Council Member Sonny Sandinez. Please pull the council for uh, D and L. Thank you. Uh, council Member Sanchez? Aye. Council Member Santanez? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dutton? Aye. Council Member Morse? Aye. Mayor Coops? Aye. Okay, what was your suggestion? We stay behind him. You got to vote on H. So yeah, you I, come out second, they do E last. So I gotta, I'm out on H and E. Oh, that H way. first. Okay, what's um, H? I, I don't believe H was pulled. So I got a conflict on H. Yeah. I thought it wasn't yes. pulled. You made oh, a motion to wait on that. Both exit. You both exit now. Both exit now. So now you and Dan. <laughs> but Dan. Nobody pulled H. No okay, pulled no, it's not pulled H. Yeah. Yes, so the remaining that. item is 14E. So I'm going to leave for 14E. Yes, that's right. And, and uh, <laughs> right, let the record right. reflect that uh, Mayor, Mayor Coops and uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, <laughs> Danton yeah. are recusing themselves on for item 14E. Right. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, thank you. I, I pulled this item for the E um, to give a background to Councilmember Morris. Were you here? Uh, the last me um, when we approved the transfer of parking for the three-story building across the Santa Chapel. Were you? Here? Oh, you were here. I was planning commission. I think. Oh, okay, okay. So you were not here. So anyway, part of the conversation was um, I was kind of concerned about um, applicants. Of transferring um, their parking requirements to the city. I get it that uh, we need development in the city, we need foot traffic, we need customers, we need pedestrians going to the city. But my concern back then, it, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, parking is, is a finite number. It's not infinite. Uh, at some point in time, um, there will be lack of parking in downtown Bellflower. So I want to prepare for the future addressing the issues today, at the same time addressing the future. And um, part of the example is uh, the city council has been proactive together with staff. Uh, we built a parking structure uh, that can accommodate over 270 vehicles. Uh, we expanded the parking on Walnut Street by acquiring through eminent domain that parking that goes now through all the way to Arkansas. So we are expanding uh, general funds to provide parking for our uh, customers, our residents, which is well and good because we have the capacity to do it. 
At the same time, we're requiring some businesses to provide parking if they can. If they couldn't, then we're allowing them to transfer their parking requirements to the city. At the same time, also, we also have a, uh, a parking district, west side of Belfar Boulevard, that pays for part of their parking, um, parking requirements in terms of maintenance of the parking west of Belfar Boulevard. So there's some kind of imbalance here in terms of the way we're approaching parking. And uh, I know we have a new city manager, and I gave him, uh, I, I gave him up to speed uh, because I had a long discussion with uh, our, our former city, uh, city manager about this. And we had, a, we had a, um, a parking study at some point after that, and it showed that we, are, we have enough parking um, to accommodate any short-term requirement, but it's not for, not for long, okay? Uh, so again, in the future, hopefully that happens. Parking is a good problem to solve. I just want to be ready for that situation we're in. More parking will be required uh, by our customers. So that is basically the segue why I pulled this item. So um, going to this item today, I just want to clarify a um, couple of things because they are transferring uh, 67 or 58 uh, spaces to the city because they cannot, this is the, um, uh, the business called Cellos and it's gonna be uh, uh, rented out to a different um, business, uh, the, at least the front side, that's my right. understanding. Uh, so since there's no parking that they can they can provide, they are transferring their parking requirements to the city. Okay, that's a segue. So first question is, in terms of the parking study, uh, who did the parking study? It says the applicant. Any particular council member Santinez, you're talking about the parking study for the proposed available, arcade. Available city parking, city study. Yes, it was the applicant that provided that information. Okay. Uh, is it something that needs to be verified or we accept it at face value? Um it so it is consistent with the findings that we've already received from previous parking studies. Mm -hmm. In the fact that it does show that um, at peak times there is available parking within the downtown. Okay. So um, based on this, the way that the study is done mm -hmm. is that they have to analyze the public parking lots at their peak hours. So the proposed use is a, an arcade. So during their peak hours, they look at all the available parking to see at what capacity those lots are. Um, so it was done by the applicant and it shows on page two of the staff report mm -hmm. the percentage of the parking spaces that are available during those peak hours. Okay, all right, good. So so the peak hours here is on Friday to Saturday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., correct? And then on Sunday from 6, 6 p.m. to, to 8. 8 p.m. Yes. Right, okay. So on the parking, su parking survey that they did, Friday, February 16, uh, from 5.05 p.m. to 5.20 p.m. So what is the relevance of this parking study which is outside of the peak hours? Oh, I'm sorry, so you can see- On page two. Yes. The peak hours is 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Yes, yeah, so there's a, and this might be a better question for the applicant as well, but there was multiple Fridays in which that lot was surveyed. Um, one of them happened to be prior to their peak hours. Um, the Friday on the 23rd is uh, at the end of their peak hours. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, March 8th was during the peak hours. So you get kind of a variety on three different Fridays at three different times how full that parking lot was. Or their parking spaces are. Okay. Okay. Well, the same thing with Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, eight forty-six p.m. to ten. I'm just curious to to know what's the relevance of those um, traffic study, which is outside of the peak hours. Um, different times as well for Sundays. Same thing. Yes. So you can see that one's past the peak hours. One is starts before the peak hours going into the peak hours, 
And then the last one is during those peak hours. So uh, again, at three different time frames. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. So, so based on this, um, at at what point? I guess it's kind of a um, you're going to be looking for a crystal ball here. At what point do we say, well, you know what, we don't have sufficient parking anymore? And when that happens, what do we do? So at this point in time, it's unknown um, when we would reach peak capacity because it also depends on the turnover of the uses in the downtown. You could have a use that does generate uh, um, quite a bit of parking demand, in which case that number would be higher. When that use comes in, it's, it's unknown at this time. So it's hard to kind of guess when we would reach peak capacity. Um, it really would depend on the uses that come into the downtown. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to see is um, having a more comprehensive study because I see a lot of um, inequity here, uh, so to speak, in terms of how we allow businesses to transfer their parking requirements to the city uh, at no cost, whereas other businesses, they pay towards their parking. So to me, it's kind of, in, there's an imbalance at, at some point. Again, I'm looking, um, I'm mentioning about businesses that have their own parking, they pay for their parking, they pay for maintenance, and on parking district on the west side, they pay for maintenance of the parking. And yet, on the other side, there's no, there's no payment in terms of maintenance, in terms of acquisition. Because at some point in time, um, I'd like to see us acquire more parking space. Uh, because business will be coming to, um, I'm an eternal optimist, They'll be coming to Bellflower. I just want to be ready for that um, eventuality that more parking will be required, more parking, will, and then at the same time, we have this su sufficient funding to pay for more parking that we can acquire, just like what happened when we purchased the, the, per the, uh, the lot um, next to the Walnut property. So anyway, I just want to bring it up uh, again. As a, um, uh, as a, uh, since we have a new city manager, at some point in time, I'd like to see a, a study on that to, be, to have a more comprehensive analysis of our parking requirements and how do we gonna pay for additional parking in the future? And how do we address uh, the, uh, the imbalance right now in terms of some business paying for parking, some are not, some are paying for maintenance, some are not. Okay. Any comments? Uh, you know, Council one. Member Morse. I like the idea of bringing in businesses onto the boulevard. Not knowing the history before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't really know if six. I, I think it's a cal yes, it's a calculation awesome based on space. Right, that'd be right. awesome if there was sixty-seven thousand. Well, keep in mind also these are the um, well. We're gonna hear from the applicant. I'm assuming that the um, the target market will be the young generation, and typically they don't drive. 
they have Uber. Well, Mr. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, well, Councilmember Sanchez, yes. I, I, I'd have to disagree with that statement. I think this is targeted more to like the millennials and the you know, the uh, you know us in the mid thirties over here. That we grew up with these games. So, um, no, I, I all joking aside, I. I hear your concerns about planning for the future. Mm -hmm. I think we can accommodate this, and I think we have a f some more flexibility to come within the next you know, year or two. But you're right. In the future, at what point in time do we plan for something more? Because if we keep going down the route that we want to go, which is you know, mm -hmm. development and, and growth and, and more businesses, we're going to need to address that. Um, and, and, and so I, I hear you, yeah. and I support that yeah. um, and, and yeah, then, conversation. And I think uh, what, what, triggered it, what triggered this is um, every time we allow businesses to transfer their parking requirements to the city, then it's, oh, did we address the parking, parking issue? That's always the trigger. And the, again, this is the second time in my memory that uh, we allowed this massive number of um, parking requirements to be, to be transferred to the city. Um, if you recall, um, since I've been city council, we, tr we allowed the transfer of some parking spaces for city ventures right next to Steelcraft, a few, a few parking spaces, what do you call? And I then believe we did. We did, yes. and, then, and then also the Serrano development. Mm -hmm. We allow a massive number of parking spaces for the commercial portion uh, to be transferred to the city. And then, again, the development, proposed development across um, Hosanna Chapel, uh, the three-story building on an empty lot right now. That was the last one, I think, that... Um, we allow the parking requirements to be transferred to the city. For the, I, and I believe you're speaking of the brew refinery project. Right, right. That project, it got approval with the CUP, but it did not go forward with a parking license agreement. Mm, okay. okay. Um, the other one that did is the comedy club. Mm -hmm, uh, okay. That is another um, business that came forward that requested parking be transferred off site. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other question? All right. No. Uh, would you like a motion? Uh, we'd like to hear the applicant. Okay. Would you like to open a public hearing? Is the applicant hearing? here? Yeah. Oh, oh, open a public hearing. Well, is that what you like? There's, it, it's not public hearing. It's not a public, public hearing. Comments. Public comments. Public comments. Public comments. So the applicants, please come forward. I think we have some, maybe we have some questions for you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Councilman. Um, I'm open for any questions that you have. Oh, let me start. Um, um, how many similar businesses do you have that are in operation? I don't have actual businesses. I do have a, what I call logistics warehouse in Cerritos that I set up starting um, January of 2020, assuming that within the next year or so that I was going to be hopefully moving to a retail facility, but then the virus came, and oh. that, that kept me locked down up until the last couple of years when I've been trying to pursue it more. Um, my facility, right now, the, the warehouse I have has about 130 machines, and mm -hmm. I tend to open a couple of Saturdays a month to my family and friends and things like that just to keep the games played, especially the pinball machines, need to be played or else mm. the mechanisms wear down and things like okay. that. So as far as business, business, but I, I have had many years with the games and uh, with, with, with the arcade kind of structure. Can you, can you give us a brief description in terms of your business model? How many machines will you have? Um, what is your target market? Uh, things like that. Sure. Um, Machine-wise, the, the proposed space we're looking at would be in 100 to 110 machines. Um, the, the, the target market actually is quite flexible. Um, it's, I have a couple of my friends' grandparents come to my place and play the pinball machines, and they're in the early 80s. So, uh, but that's... Um, yeah, the, from probably the largest group would be 30s to 50s. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, younger ones, the, the children that come in really enjoy it because the games they play at home, they're all on just a hand controller. That's all you ever mm -hmm. do. The arcade machines give you a wide variety of controls. So the kids are actually 
that was open just uh, last uh, Saturday, and there was a lineup of kids playing a game called Gunfight from 1973. So, and I mean, little, little kids, like eight years old and 10 years Mm -hmm. old were lined, they were playing that for like two hours. Um, What was the other parts of the question? I I get into... In terms of, um, how do you plan to market your business? Since it's your first time, right? In terms of this... In the actual business side of it, yes. Arcade business. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to market? Because we want to have more foot traffic in downtown Bellflower. Oh, no, this this will bring foot traffic. So Um, how do you plan to do that? um, Being a classic video game pinball arcade, there's actually a lot of collectors throughout the country. And... This would be probably one of the largest vintage classic video game pinball arcades open in California Um, because for for lots of different reasons. There's some states where the arcades have 600, 700 games and things like that, but California has specific uh, uh, challenges to that. But um, that... So... I keep forgetting the question. Um, oh, how <laughs> do you market this? Oh, that oh, was yeah, my yeah. question. Oh, yes. Um, uh, Facebook is a great place to go. I had friends years ago that had a warehouse similar to mine, and they chose to try to, you know, bring more folks in. And um, it, it actually kind of sells itself. I had people from just this last Saturday, friends of mine that... that and not because they're friends, but because they wanted to go to the arcade, that uh, commuted from San Diego. Um, what's nice is it's not, you know, you'll bring up a, a nice base of players in the immediate area in the immediate cities. But something like this will actually draw people from even other counties mm-hmm. because um, there are many... Um, beercades, barcades. There's a lot of those that do the alcohol thing. There's only a handful that do the straight, you know, game arcade, vintage arcade experience. So are, are these typical, the old uh, old arcade machines? Sure, like the Pac-Mans and the Centipedes and the Froggers. And so it's, it, it, it'll take some coins or no, do you yeah. allow PayPal and... Uh, QR codes or um, it'll be a uh, uh, pay a fee at the door. Oh, you get I see. you get like a wristband kind of thing, and then there's in and outs through the ev- you know evening, which is great because like for instance, if they want to go to Calaveras, if they want to go to Roca, and have dinner, they can come back. Um, it's I I believe that's the best model to work forward because when you're dealing with quarter drop, there's also the mechanical aspect of things where you have to have people that are practice up and know how to work on the machines. But if all the machines are set to free play and you just pay that fee at the door, then that gives you the whole evening, you know, to, to do what you like. Is there any limit in terms of the hours they can play? Um, are you talking like operating hours? No, no. Let's say if I, if I have my wristband, mm-hmm. how, lo- how long can I play during the day or during uh, the night uh, from all, seven, all, all during, day. especially during peak hours? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, all day long, all, all, all of the operating day on. Um, it's, not, it's not limited to like, oh, it's $10 an hour or anything like that. There'll, so, be, one, there'll be one set fee, and then you'll be able, say, if you come in at 7 o'clock at night, you could play all the way to midnight, or you could leave and go get dinner and come back, things like that. So there's no limit in terms of actually using a particular machine. So my, my fellow council member can be hugging one of the pinball machines <laughs> for two hours, and they'd like to use the machine too. Well, uh, there, there, there will be signs posted about uh, etiquette, you know. Okay. But uh, And uh, generally speaking, people are having such a good time, and... My arcade is, a, is able to provide enough games that, you know, you'll, you'll definitely have more than one she- machine that you want to play in that evening. Do you have ice hockey also? Air, ho- air, 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 ho- air, air hockey. Air hockey could come if I can find the space. Oh. Um, but um, this is more uh, pinball machines mm. and arcade, the stand-up video games that you remember that... You know, we, you, yeah. you saw it's on like the 80s and things like right. that. Right, okay, okay. And again, how many machines are you going to be able to install um, roughly? Uh, 100 to 110. And that's, really? where, that's where the size um, 
you know, some machines are much larger than others. Air hockey tables, pool tables, well, I wouldn't be doing pool tables, but air hockey, foosball, things like that would take like the floor space of four to six arcade machines. So you have to, you know, with a finite number of space, you have to think about uh, okay. Okay. your, you know, what, what, what your lineup is going to be. Uh, okay. I, I forgot to ask you, can you sign in so that they see the clues yes, you yes, know please. who Absolutely. you are? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Any, you're Mr. Redding, right? Yes. Okay. Any question of Mr. Redding? Uh, Council Member Sanchez. Yes. Thank you, Council Member Sunny Uh Just one question. I think I heard the answer. Um, it, it sounds like you won't be having or applying anytime soon for a beer or wine license. It, it's 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 not impossible, but it's it is not on my your not your not on my prior list. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, the for the space, the wonderful side part of it is Calaveras, Roca, mm-hmm. sure. um, across the street. The, the you know the Ricci's. The, it, anywhere anywhere you you go out the front door, anywhere you look, you can you can find you know alcoholic uh, beverages. So you'll be like a side entertainment for the others. I see. That's yeah, I it'll be kind of like the the energy center. You know that I could see people coming. Okay, we're going to do dinner. Yeah. We'll hit the arcade for an hour or two. Finish up with the comedy club, you know. Just you, and who knows? Maybe you go across the place to the D and D store or whatever okay. you believe. You know, what, whatever is your entertainment. Very good. Um, well, if you uh, if you ever change your mind, we do have a pretty good consultant that we have on um, a program to support businesses in the downtown. Liz O'Neill and Mr. Delalonga could help you with that, and uh, she could help you with the process of of acquiring a beer and wine license. Okay. Yeah. In again. The future. It, yeah. It's just get get the get the arcade portion right. Yeah. And yeah. then you know I'm you know I'm not it, but it's not in the initial. Fair enough. Okay. That's it. Good luck, and we'll see you at the ribbon cutting. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Good. Council Member Morris. Actually, you guys asked the questions I was going to ask, so. I'm uh, okay. All right. And um, if it's approved today, when do you plan to open? Um, we're looking hopefully um, maybe first of August. First of August. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's soon. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's other there's other processes that have to be completed with the city as well. Mm-hmm. But um, um, first of August, first of I would I couldn't imagine beyond first of September. Okay. So probably right either at the end or right at you know at the, at the end of the summer. Okay. Very good. Do you have any question of us? No, no. I, I, I very much appreciate your time and your questions. And okay. if you have any further concerns or oh, one one final. How much is your the fee that you're going to be charging? At this moment, the 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 fee is going to be nineteen seventy five for one month or no 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 uh, for for an evening for an evening. Yes. Uh, well, but the thing is, if you if you look at the world now, how the prices have just gone up in the uh, okay. last few years. That and you're operating hours again. Um, depends. Um, on weekdays? I think, I think Friday and Saturday was uh, 7 to midnight, and Sunday it. was <laughs> like, is it 2 to 8, 3 to 9, some, something in that area. 7 to midnight. So we better, I haven't looked at the numbers We better in a finish while. our council meeting fast. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for your time. All right. Uh, Mr. Mayor. All right, Mr. Pleasure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Councilmember, if I may, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the city manager to execute license agreement file number 1048 in a form approved by the city attorney between James Redding and the city of Bellflower regarding the use of public parking lots located within the town center district and the civic center. I'll second. All right, motion by Councilmember Sanchez, seconded by Councilmember Morse for the city council to um, approve the um, staff recommendation. All right, roll call, please. Councilmember Sanchez? Aye. Councilmember Morse? Aye. Councilmember Santinez? Aye. All right. Can someone call uh, the call mayor me. and mayor pro tem? Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> All right. 
let the record reflect that Mayor Coops and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Danton are rejoining the city council meeting. Did you upset everybody in the room? How that? Oh, there everyone is happy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pictures worth a thousand words, Clifford. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I think we've graduated finally from consent calendar and moved right on to council reports. Uh, Wendy, would you like to share with us anything in, uh, you want to talk about? Um, no. No, okay. <laughs> uh, we'll start on this end. <laughs> Mr. I, Sonny Sanyanez. I have nothing to report, Mayor. You feel all right? Oh, yes. Okay. I <laughs> Victor. I got nothing to report, Mayor. Right. Mayor Pro Tem Ray Dutton. No, I don't have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he <got you> <laughs> I do think we did something really cool tonight when we got people to work on the weekends to take care of graffiti. Mm -hmm. This council has asked for this and requested it and hoped for, and we finally got the perfect storm. We got money, we got our director, and we got help that can pull this off. And we're gonna be able to take care of the city better than it ever has been on these weekends, all weekends, and especially the long weekends. And to, this past weekend was a good example, it was four days, and by the time the guys get back to work on Tuesday, it takes them a week to dig out all the nonsense that has gone on in the street. So, City of Belfar is on a good place, and I, th I, I think anybody that's watching TV broadcast will recognize it, that we're working hard, uh, to make sure that uh, the homeless are dealt with and taken care of in a humane way. But more importantly, we want to make sure you're safe. We all work on the basis of making sure that we run on the platform of keeping you, the city safe. Because who wants to live here if you're not safe? And by be, the big item pickups is important because it junks the city up. That's going to be removed quickly. And that will allow those that would like to take those things and build a homeless camp not to have the items to do it. So all in all, it's really going to make a difference in the optics of our city. And uh, we're all excited to think that we're, we're improving all the time. So with that, I'm going to adjourn this re next regular meeting to the City Council meeting at 5.30 p.m. on Monday, June 10th, 2024. We're adjourned. <laughs>